Hi everyone, I am so glad that you made it today. Uh, our course that we're going to be reviewing today is our Bach 3, What Is It and Why Do You Need One? This is compiled and presented by DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialist. We're located in Fresno, California. Again, this is a Bach 3 general information uh, webinar. My name is Linda Jenkins. Our office number is 559-319-8464. You can also email us at DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialist at gmail.com. Now we do have more new transportation business courses available, so please feel free to join our email list today to receive those free updates on our subscriptions and get access to our new courses that are available. Also, we ask that you please like and share and follow our web pages here on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you. Now, a lot of people need to know what the definition of BOC is. I know when you're first starting out and you're just learning your business and you decided that you're wanting to start you um, a transportation business, you know, a lot of acronyms are being thrown out there. Well, BOC stands for Blanket of co Coverage. It typically assigns a person or a business in each of the 50 U.S. states and the District of Columbia to receive and forward your legal documents. The about three form is completed by a process agency of your choosing. Now, people like to know what a box three actually is. The box three is, and if y'all, let me put my quotes in here, a designation of agents for services of a process, okay? And that in legality terms means basically if your business were to be served papers for any kind of legality, they need a contact person that's always going to be available. The person who files your box three is the person that you're asking or the agency that you're asking to represent you. Now there are some rules and regulations about becoming a designated agent and we will get into that further along in the presentation. But at least for now just know that in fact all trucks for hire which are carriers, brokers or freight forwarders must have a box 3 form filed with the Federal Motor Carrier Administration. And from here on out, we'll be just saying FMCSA. Before their order of authority or master carrier number will be issued. So in other words, you have to designate it. It has to be filed. You have to have your insurance in place for all of this to happen. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting you know, to get your master carrier number or your order of authority to be doing business in the transportation industry if you're a carrier. The next thing we're looking at is our process service agencies. Now, I like to start from the top and work my way down. That way, you know, you get your foundation for what is everything built off of. Now you have your process service agencies. Your service agencies uses agents to provide the box three services to you throughout the United States and the District of Columbia. So if you want to think of it in, in the form of something simple, an example would be like an insurance or a real estate agency. So a real estate agency has one building, but then they have a whole bunch of agents that work for them. Okay, same process with these process service agencies. You have one agency and then they have agents throughout the entire United States that can help serve you getting your box three filed in the particular state that you're going to run.
So a process service agencies must employ, lease, or hire the services of individuals or entities within each state and be federally registered with the FMCSA in order to be able to grant a BOC 3. All right. One agency can be used for all 50 states and the District of Columbia. However, you have to determine who that agency is going to be. Now, at the end of this presentation, I'll tell you where you can find those agencies. So what does a process agent do? Well, about, and while about three filings are relatively uniform, the process agent companies vary. A uh, process agent can do box three filings, but they can also do other things. Kind of like, let's look at that life insurance guy, okay? So if you're looking at um, a, a person who works in an insurance company, you have some people that not only sell you know, your home, but they sell your auto and they sell your health and they sell you your, you know, your vision and all of this different things one agent can do. Well, the same thing with this processing agent. They can also sell different things. So some people choose just to do box three while other people choose to do a, a mass majority of different services for you. So, you know, that can be DOT safety compliance, it can be consultation, it can be providing other materials, and then also other services like getting you into, you know, your lottery for your drug policies. So you basically have three types of process agents now, this really isn't going to matter to you if you use an agency, they will just get you the ones that you need, okay? But basically speaking, there are three types of agents. You have your registered agent, your resident agent, and your statutory agent. Just remember, a process agent is critical to your company's compliance and legal standing. The roles that uh, they did, and the role that requires dealing with sem seemingly simple tasks can get complicated if they're handled incorrectly. And that could cost you a lot of money in fines, a lot of shutdown time. And if the state really got upset about it to an extent, they could even dissolve your business where you couldn't even run in their state. So it's very important that at the very beginning when you're doing your formation phase of your business, that you uh, stop and select the right registered agent for your particular business because if you just get somebody that's you know like a family member or a friend you know what happens if y'all's relationship breaks up you know they could ruin your business and you don't want that to happen so it's best to always go you know the professional way use an agency and like i said here in a minute we'll get into those different agencies okay Another thing that I'm asked quite often is, can I file my own BOC 3? Well, if you are a carrier, okay, if you are a carrier, in other words, you have trucks that run underneath you, commercial motor vehicles, then the only person that can actually file the BOC 3 on you, for you with the FMCSA is going to be a process agent. Now, if you are a broker or a freight forwarder, you know, and you don't own any commercial vehicles, then you can file the form box three on your own behalf, but that comes with complications and we're fixing to go over that, okay? Uh, but you can only have one completed form on file. Now, some people say, yeah, I have both and all of that. Well, that's okay, but the problem is, is when you go to insure your load, they're gonna consider a, con a conflict of interest. Uh, it gets into a really deep well, and we'll address that in a different um, a different arena as to why, a different course as to why you should never do both of them at the same time. I know some of the larger carriers do, but they provide their own insurance. 
you know, and if they choose to do so, then maybe they can take on that type of liability. But you as a normal carrier, you know, like a mom and pop shop, somebody with less than 500 trucks, you're, you really need to focus on, you know, doing everything the professional way and getting it taken care of um, the correct way. So it's best to only have one form on file. Know that if you're a carrier, that you're gonna to have to have a process agent or agency file for you, okay? Now, some people that are running a small company, they know that they're not gonna be going out of state and stuff like that, and they actually have a brick and mortar business there in the state in which they reside. So. Some people, now this isn't for really carriers, this is for like the brokers and the freight forwarders. Uh, they might choose to file their own box three, okay? The cons to that, there are some things that you need to know and do so that you're not, you know, breaking any rules or regulations. First off, if you are going to file your own box three as a broker or as a freight forwarder, you can only do business in your home, own, in your home state. You must be available at your place of business from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. every weekday. It either has got to be you or your representative. You cannot have days off for vacation nor for holidays. It has to be that you will be available or someone will be available at your office from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. every weekday. Remember, transportation is a 365-day-a-year type of business. So there are no holidays when it comes to transportation. Additionally, there is the possibility of getting served for a lawsuit in front of your clients or in your, your employees if you file it yourself. And lastly, you must enter your home address into the public record. And a lot of people would rather keep their home address private because if there was anything negative that might happen, against a certain company and they wanted to retaliate, you sure don't want them to know where, you know, yourself and your family might be living. So in short, it's usually just not worth the amount of money you can save by serving as your own process agent. Again, the average cost for a process agent ranges from $25 to $40. So, I mean, it's not that much money. Go ahead and spend it, guys. If you're gonna spend that much money to get your business off the ground, I'm sure you can afford $25 to $40. For your box three filings, for some of the stuff that you need to know, the cost of the filing for the initial box three averages about $25 to $40. One signed copy of the box three form should be filed with each state in which a trucking company operates. That company should also have a copy of the box three at their primary office. Additionally, if legal papers are served, you may incur additional costs for forwarding those papers to your business. Now remember, if you're running all 50 states, that's 50 states that you know would be sending you information if required. You know, surely you'd never have 50 all at one time. However, you have to have the whole 50 plus the uh, District of Columbia covered. So, well, I told you earlier, we're gonna tell you where to find an agency. The FMCSA website has a listing of box three process agents. Okay, those agencies are there. Uh, they have uh, been approved for national. So you can use one of their agencies that's in that listing and they can help you get everything sent to all 50 states if that's what you're gonna run or if you're just gonna be running, you know, certain uh, regions 
like the southeast, the northeast, uh, midwest, west, um, you know, whichever area you're going to be running, uh, they can make sure that you get into all of the states that you need. Now, even though that they send that out to those particular states, you need to make sure that you only stay within those states. If you cross the line into some place you're not supposed to, then you could be in violation. So be aware of that. That's up to you. So in closing, I'd like to thank you for attending our general information concerning the BOC 3, what it means to you. Uh, again, my name is Linda Jenkins. I'm with DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialist. We're located out of Fresno, California. Please feel free to subscribe to our email, email list today so that you can be updated on when we put out new videos and then also to get access to our new courses. Please remember, if you enjoyed this video, to like and share and follow our channel. Thank you so much for attending, and we appreciate your time. If you have any problems or questions, please feel free to give us a call at 559-319-8464. Again, thank you for joining our BOP3 General Information Training Session today. My name is Linda Jenkins. We're DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialists. We're located in Fresno, California. Our email is DOT FMCSA Compliance Specialist at gmail.com. And our telephone number is 559-319-8464. Thank you so much.